Today, I'm going to talk about my enemies, um, especially their nature, the causes for their arising, my thoughts about them, my actions towards them, the results of having enemies, and finally, how to eliminate them. So when I started doing the meditation on equanimity uh, a long time ago, I thought, wow, enemy is such a strong word. I don't have any enemies. I have people I dislike sometimes. Um, I have people who annoy me, but not enemies. Um, and then I started thinking about my life, and I saw that when I had very high expectations of people, like romantic partners, um, then it was very easy for them to become enemies. Or people I live with, they go from friend to enemy to friend to enemy constantly. Um, and of course, there's people on you know, different parts of the world that are doing harmful things to people, and so they're my enemies. And so there was this I noticed this constant change in my mind. Stranger, friend, enemy, friend, enemy, stranger. Um, and of course, that happens at the Abbey. <laughs> we know that. Um, and so I was looking at, well, what are the conditions that lead to the arising of me labeling someone an enemy? So they criticize me. They disapprove of what I'm doing. They get what I want. I even saw recently, they simply had a different opinion. <laughs> and I got extremely angry <laughs> and rejected their opinion. Um, I even saw a footprint in the snow that was not on the designated path, and I got very angry. <clears throat> And so I thought about, okay, well, what is the nature of my enemies? Well, the enemy image is very easily created. Unlike the friend image that takes a long time to build up, this is very quick, and it's very difficult to change. And some of the thoughts I have are, I don't like them, or they harmed me, or I don't trust them. I'm not sure I'm going to get a pleasant feeling when I interact with them. So it, there's guardedness. And I've recently, um, unfortunately, noticed thoughts like, am I really happy now when I see that they're unhappy? Am I really rejoicing when they were blamed? And it's really humbling. And I see how far I am from the ideal. And so then what do I do with my enemies? How do I act in relationship to them? Well, I try to ignore them, but that's very difficult here, as anyone who's tried would know. Um, yeah, I avoid them. I try to ignore them. That doesn't work. And I was thinking my enemy actually tells me a lot more about my own mind. It tells me I have anger. <laughs> um, it also tells me that I'm perceiving harm or that I'm thinking that there could be harm. There's the possibility of harm. And I also see my own craving, especially when I see someone getting something I want and then I put them in the enemy category. And all of a sudden, it's like this big mirror in front of me that shows me my craving. And then what is the result? Well, I'm miserable. <laughs> I'm surrounded by enemies. And as Venable Jigme has said often, there are no enemies here. And so I dismiss them. And then what happens? Well, then me. They may dismiss me. They might ignore me or try to avoid me. And the other thing I've seen, it happened several months ago, was that 
all of a sudden, I could see very clearly that someone had an enemy image of me. And that really shifted my mind because I could see, wow, is this what I'm doing? I'm projecting my own anger on someone. I'm, I'm fixing them into this one particular uh, way of being. They're a totally fixed identity. They can't change and they're not even practicing. But then when it was turned, and I, I could see that somebody was doing that in regards to me, I thought, well, that's totally unfair. <laughs> you know, that, of course I'm trying to practice. I'm, I'm applying the antidotes. And I could just see, wow, this is the suffering that we torment ourselves with, is projecting you know, onto others and then they onto ourselves constantly, and it's so misery-making. And it also creates loneliness. I feel disconnected from others, and there's also fear. I mean, if I'm afraid of someone, then that means they're my enemy, or at least I dislike them. There's a lack of trust there. So how do we um, eliminate this enemy image that we're projecting onto others um, that I have seen as the cause of so much pain? Um, so I went to um, uh, Shantideva's training anthology. So there's a section on how to work with aversion, or how to work with anger. And he gives some very practical advice um, so he says, the remedy for aversion is loving kindness. So we all know that. And in the case of sentient beings you don't like, either don't look at them, which again is hard at the Abbey, as we see everyone all the time, or arouse delight together with them in regards to the same object such as food and so on. And that really struck me. And I thought, I'm going to try this. And so I've been trying to do this. And it's fun. And it's like, wow. Like, for example, this person's enjoying lunch. Well, why can't I enjoy lunch as well? You know, this person's being very playful today. Can I match their level of playfulness with them? Or even, wow, they seem really peaceful and content. They're doing walking meditation. Oh, I wonder what would it be like if I were peaceful in this moment, just like they are. <laughs> so it, it's really been a helpful way to turn my mind. Um, yeah, there's someone happy. Can't I also be happy? Okay, this is not rocket science. So he continues, here, wishing for, aiming at, being committed to, and rejoicing in the happiness of others is loving kindness. So of course, this is the opposite of what I'm doing when I'm rejoicing at someone's pain or blame. And he says, this is a form of love that is not defiled by sexual attraction or by expecting something in return. So it's clean, clear. I just want them to be happy. I rejoiced at their happiness. I'm aiming towards their happiness. So it's something I know for myself I really need to train myself in because I'm very much habituated to the opposite. And it's just really... Um, embarrassing to admit that I have rejoiced in others' pain, and I have. And so I really want to really eliminate that state of mind and do the opposite. And so Lama Zopa, in his book, Patience, which is a commentary to chapter six of Guide to Bodhisattva's Way of Life, um, he says this, the enemy is somebody who opposes our self-cherishing. Oh, okay. 
So I need an enemy. <laughs> They're very good for my practice. And he also says, by being happy, when we see our enemy happy, we are defeating the self-cherishing mind and working towards enlightenment. So this quote, quote, simple practice of being happy when I see my enemy happy is really pushing against, really fighting against the self-cherishing mind. And in that way, really leading to full awakening um, so that we can really benefit others and not only benefit our friends, but benefit the very people who are causing ourselves and those we love harm. And so we then become a refuge. We become someone who is able to bring happiness to all beings. Um, and in this regard, I'll end with two lines from Shantideva. I go for refuge to those springs of happiness who bring their very enemies to perfect bliss.